Here you go, and uh, thank you for joining my workshop today. First things first, guys, I speak Russian. Uh, at least I understand some of Russian, but uh, preparing for this conference, I wasn't sure that I will know all of these uh, industry-specific words, and then I come to the conference, and every second uh, sentence that I see is in English anyways. <laughs> so, like crowdsourcing, or you'll see what I mean, right? So, my point is, if you have any questions during this, because uh, lots of things I will be talking about have been discussed today, like you've been talking so much about how to recruit good salespeople, how to motivate good salespeople, how to build up a good sales structure, and so on. So. Uh, with uh, some of the things you just maybe want to shout out during the time, I'm totally fine with this. You can ask in Russian. If I don't understand, then I will ask you again, and uh, we can do this uh, by the ear as well. Uh, does that sound fine? Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. And also, um, just to get the feel of this group, I want to understand who I'm talking to. Are you um, any of here founders, CEOs of companies? Mm -hmm. And uh, sales development leaders? All right. And sales reps, marketing? Trying to, okay, good. Um, the way how I uh, work this up, uh, just to give you a heads up, so I'm gonna cover a couple of emotions that lots of our clients go through before they come to us. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story and I'm obviously gonna jump in into the main IT mistakes that we see that our clients make. Again, lots of these things you have seen already today and if some of them are like, you know, doubling or tripling because some of the, like we have been to this conference a couple of times in the past, so some of the speakers this year, they are taking over our information from past years, which is great. But in sales, they say that sometimes you do have to repeat information 16 times in order for you to get it. <laughs> so maybe it's time number three, you know, you still have 13 to go, who knows. All right, so I promise to start off from emotions. So the clients that uh, come to us, they have some different ones. First of all, they can feel insecure because looking at their business, looking at their numbers, like it can be a multi-million contract, but if it's only like one of three clients and they're gonna lose this one, then the next month they might not have job or work uh, for 20 people on their team. So they come to us and ask, uh, asking, you say, hey guys, like how do we prepare and how do we build this outbound sales process that when, uh, if something like this should happen, that we actually would have somebody in our pipeline for the next, uh, for the next client. Or, uh, some of our clients feel too dependent on, uh, uh, mostly it's inbound sources, right? Like when you've spent all this money on marketing, uh, when it's, uh, um, when you are getting some referrals, like these are awesome. And these ones uh, do become as uh, some of the long-term contract and so on. But what makes it difficult, these are not controllable results. Sometimes you get one lead, sometimes you get three, and some month you're just, you're not sure. You don't know how many you will get. So it's very difficult to build up your sales processes, structures, and even the expectations without really knowing how to control and track these things. Undervalued. A lot of uh, guys we've been speaking to here in Minsk, they say that uh, they do want to charge more, but without having this really, uh, confident uh, sales system, they don't know how to charge more. And one of those things, if your sales process feels uh, confident and professional, then you can already ask higher amounts of money as well. Not just like, hey, so what do you think? Uh, I'll talk about that later. And of course, some of you just <laughs> feel lost, like you don't know how to do next. And um, this happens typically with, you know, this uh, successful one team people. Uh, they understand that they're having more projects on, that they need to hire some more developers to their team, and maybe they need to now hire some sales reps, but they don't know how to train those sales reps because like so far, all the work they've been getting is mostly like from the inbound sources, right? So this is all what we're gonna talk about. And uh, to give you a comparison, so this is my brother. I'm joking, no, none of them. <laughs> my brother has a beer belly, but... Uh, <laughs> The point is, if uh, you decided to work out, right, and you decided that, okay, now it's time to really take my health into, into the brackets, and you go to the gym, and uh, you watched a couple of videos here and there, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna start off from like, the, you know, this building this front core. And <laughs> you go to the gym, and then you only work on, on this front core. So what happens, like after three months, you are becoming a Quasimodo, because you didn't train any of your back. You know what I'm talking about, right? So the same thing, like some of the guys come to us and they're like, you know what, I have this amazing closing technique. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yay, I know too. So the thing is like, there's so many sources and uh, your sales reps, especially the active sales reps, they want to uh, amaze you with all those ideas and LinkedIn texts, you know, from Inc.com. Um, uh, 
all those different ideas on how to build business, how to build better sales, but sometimes quite typically they bring you like one point from this huge big structure. So my point is like you don't go to gym just to work on one particular type of body for like three, four months in a row, if it's not your leg day, not your, not your uh, feet day. So why would you only work on closing? Why would you only work on legion or uh, on all those other things? So to have a good workout plan, you need goal, diet plan, workout plan, right? In order to have a good sales system, you need a metric system. Lots of it have been talked about today, right? OKRs, KPIs. Optimization and uh, definitely <coughs> motivation. Like great motivated sales rep is really good, but if he doesn't have any sales systems, then he can actually um, uh, ruin some of the relationships you have. And I'll bring you some examples during this presentation as well. So my story, you, you might have seen this slide today. It's me and Simon here at this conference. There's a couple of us more. We work with um, small software houses, with uh, startup accelerators, with uh, some unicorn startups. So. I'll use this. So Taxify Bolt, for example, is uh, one of our clients right now. They are uh, Estonian Yandex. So they're right now building their systems. They're going to Nigeria, all kind of different African countries that I don't even know, um, all over Europe and uh, not in Belarus. So that's why I have to explain this to you. But the point is, is um, uh, they came to us with the question, Katrin, like, uh, Catherine, where do we start off from? Like, should we build the system first? Because like they have a sales rep in France, in Paris, and they believe that it's a really good salesperson because he's got like this huge extensive background of selling, right? And they said that we've tried that and uh, we have recruited like two, three people in the past for our Paris office, but when they leave, there is no documentation left. There is no traces and we don't know how to even track or how to go back to the clients that we already have. So that's that's what we're mostly focusing on. And uh, my story, similar to Simon's. So how many of you have seen Simon's presentation today, yesterday? Okay, so not all of you. Our very first step was the United States. We went door to door to sell educational materials. So how it worked, I did this for seven years and I recruited some students from St. Petersburg, uh, Russia. But the, the way it worked, it was uh, six days per week. 14 hours per day we went door to door without sending an email first, without sending a LinkedIn message first or phone call, we were knocking on doors and we're trying to get in the door. The whole idea behind that was we, it was definitely B2C sale, right? Because in 20 minutes we were supposed to close, uh, like to run the whole presentation, to close and to collect like 600 to a thousand dollars in advance and we most of the time didn't even have the education materials all on us. Like we were supposed to bring them back after, after three, four years, uh, months, <laughs> months. Yeah, so can you imagine like how much trust we had to build and uh, the guys from Belarus here, it's uh, Estonia is not a well-known country in, uh, in the United States. It was like, <laughs> I knocked on the door and they were asking, so where are you from, Astoria? Which was a tiny like city or town next to their town, right? Like most of the United States people that we knocked on, they didn't even, they hadn't even been outside of the states, uh, their own state before. So, you know, like they didn't own a passport. So to trust somebody like me, completely different with this accent with $600,000 uh, check, it was uh, a good experience for me to build the trust first. After this, I went to something different. I went to more to corporate world. I started selling um, custom made clothing. So I was calling on uh, corporate clients, bankers, lawyers, uh, legion basically, uh, bankers, lawyers, um, and so on. And I brought this business, like it was uh, established in Canada. I brought this over to Europe. So starting off from Paris, then uh, Brussels, Luxembourg, we opened up a very successful office in Moscow with the same exact Canadian uh, specifics. And then we went to Hong Kong and Australia. And what I saw is when you do have like a really good system and something that is being uh, consistently improved, but also consistently used uh, across the markets, it actually works quite well. And now that we're working with uh, IT companies in building B2B sales, right? I tend to constantly remind my clients that, hey guys, like in front of you, it can be a mask of the company. You know, it's a corporation, like we have to make this decision now. But behind this mask, it's still a person who is taking this decision. And if you forget about this part, then the, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to do the sale. 
But let's jump into the mistakes of selling, right? Okay. All right. You are talking to the wrong person. And uh, number one, very <laughs> simple. Like, you know, you call to the, if any of you still do uh, phone calls, like it can be the same thing with emailing, but uh, you call to the company, you are so happy that you got somebody on the phone, somebody speaking on the phone, you deliver the full spiel and she's gonna tell you, it's, oh, I'm the executive assistant. Can you send an email to info at company.com? So, sounds stupid, right? How about sending an email, info at company.com? <laughs> sounds stupid, right? And um, another part of that, talking to the wrong person is uh, tailoring your material, not to the specific person. Like, uh, let's say that you, you want to work with a very specific startup in New York and you want to present your services to them. So you have a meeting scheduled in the morning with the CEO of the company and you have a meeting scheduled in the afternoon with the CTO of the company. So think about your presentation. Do you do the same exact speech? Do you ask the same exact questions? Do you show the exact same product? If you do, think twice because what they need, what they want, and what will solve their problem at this moment, it, you can have the same product, but you probably need to tailor a little bit different source to that, right? Number two, working with no process. So some of you guys now know this company Bolt or Taxify in Estonia, this unicorn startup. So you come to Estonia and you want to come to their office and uh, you have a meeting scheduled at 11, you decide to not take GPS to your car and you have no 3G or 4G in our country. And you, you will try to get to the office just by feeling it. Does that sound stupid? <laughs> Can you feel it to come to my country to a foreign office without a map? <laughs> well, good luck to you. Like our people typically don't know where both office is, right? So why would you, why would you let your salespeople feel it and not have a process? And like, to be honest, quite a few clients come to me and they ask me, it's like, Katrin, but like my salespeople, they don't want to be too controlled. They don't want to have a rigid process. And this is not what I am about. I am about more building a skeleton for your process. Because most of the sales reps, especially if they want to be the top sales reps in your company, they come to you and they want to they wanna believe you because their base structures worked on like, you know, base salary, some commission, and so on, right? So if they come to your company and then you change the sales tactics every single day, they're not gonna stay for you for too long and you will constantly be thinking that sales reps are bad. But really, if you don't have the processes for them, how they could ever become good? So this is, happen this is what happens to the companies that never grow bigger than nine, 10 people teams because you know the CEO typically is really good at selling his own products and for him it's very difficult to translate why he's selling what he's selling. And it's also lots of networking for this person too. So um, what we do, we introduce a cycle of sales and this is quite, uh, some of you who were to the workshop yesterday, you, you might recognize this process. It's eight steps and this is obviously a very simplified version of what we build. So the first contact is email, uh, LinkedIn call, uh, call and uh, trade shows, right? Like the more personal the meeting, the better. Uh, first meeting qualification for us is meant for you guys to qualify the person first. And the idea behind this is <coughs> to qualify from your side. So first of all, that you don't get shitty clients that are always unhappy. But on the other side, also to qualify and see um, if they even have this interest in the product. Because I see a lot from, from salespeople, um, I, I see a lot of fear before they go into the demo. And some of you guys probably have like an hour long demos, hour and a half, depending on the product. And you know, they are so scared because they know that there will be this one objection that will come up in the end, or they're just afraid of the word no <laughs> that comes in the end. And they're like, you know, this full hour, they're just like <coughs> shaking about this. So the point is like, you want to qualify and you want to like uh, ask some questions in advance in your own tailored and well-planned way to see if this could be even a good strategy for you. Like for example, for us, we don't work with huge corporations, like corporations bigger than 300, 400 people. 
The reason is simple. I'm there alone. I don't want to go through the bureaucratic process. I just ha like I have enough clients of you guys, of the guys that I have in Estonia. I don't I don't need to cover all of them. So if you know good qualifications for your own product and for your own client, it's gonna make it a lot easier for you as well. Also to teach your sales reps which ones are the clients that they can just you know shove aside. It's like no, they're not our client. Mm -hmm. Solution presentation. So only after. Uh, qualification, if we understood that yes, it's probably could be a good match from us, only then we jump into the solution presentation, which in fact is not universal for every single persona, but it, it, we try to make it tailored uh, according to the persona that you'll have. And only then we go to summary and price negotiation, right? So how about the situations, guys, where <laughs> you come to a meeting and they are going to ask you, so how much is it? Like, can you go through this first? If you don't have the system set up, then no, <laughs> because you just don't know what to say. You're like, OK. But most of our clients that we work with, we teach them how to start off from like relevant stuff first and then go, go to into price negotiation. So it will be more even type of negotiation anyways, right? Because I mean, if you tell them the price right away, I mean, they're just checking if you're cheaper or more expensive and what information is going to give you. If you are cheaper, if this is, your main selling points, okay, but that also means that the client is probably expecting a cheaper type of service, not as good quality, right? So you want to have a really well thought through system on how to introduce the pricing to your system. All right, and then you go to close, you sign the contract, and you get referrals. We had a meeting yesterday at uh, one of the local companies here, Split Metrics, and uh, the lady said, thank you for telling this because I'm trying to tell this to my sales guys all the time. And the thing is, guys, if, if you didn't sell the client, if you didn't close them, if they didn't sign, like, is it okay to ask for referrals? Of course. Yes. And some of those clients become <coughs> your best evangelists, right? Uh, not clients, uh, like the guys that didn't buy from you, but they, if you did this all in a professional manner, if you left them in a good mood, you ask for referrals, they almost feel that they need to give you some. All right, number three is selling from the first contact. So it works in B2C. <laughs> I sell books door to door, so it does work. In B2B, what you will get is, um, can you send me an email and I'll reply to you later. <laughs> and uh, one of the companies I, uh, I worked with, so their sales rep uh, called and then he's like, okay, this is awesome. And they're like, okay, uh, let's sign up. Can you, like, can you send me some more information? You know what happened next? The guy called the company every single day. Like, did you check the contract? Did you have time? Did you have the meeting? So what it ended up with, uh, they never picked up his phone. They put his email into their spam folder and they wrote to the company officials, hey, can you please like take us off your list? This is way too much. So PR is lost and you get the deal. So selling from first contact also means sending out an email that gives out all of your features in the first email. Does that make sense? You say that no, but I just opened up a uh, private corporation in Estonia, like a small, my own personal company. And the next day I started getting emails. Hey, Katrin, let us help you out with the website. And then, you know, it's, uh, the email was this long that you don't even get until the end. No call to action in the end and no personal relationship whatsoever. So I'm like, hmm, I might need a website one day. I will put a star next to it and then I'll forget it about it. So there is like 60, 80 emails in my uh, inbox just because of that, which I will never go back to. Like, if I need a website, I'll go and Google it. And you guys, you've just wasted a lot of time and probably a good contact. Out of those companies, none of them wrote to me for the second time or third time to establish any kind of personal connection. Even to check, maybe I am a prospect, right? So when you go to the first contact, um, have the system already. Somebody today was talking about the follow-up system, right? So when you have it all organized, step one, step two, step three, then it's also easy for your sales reps to follow. Like if they have this visual thing that they know, it's like, it's totally fine, 90% of my guys don't ever reply to my first email. They know that they will need to send the second one. They know that they will need to send the third one. We do, they change the channel after that. So we kind of let them know that, hey, I'm gonna call you up next or LinkedIn you next. So do not try, like don't give up all of your power in your email one that you will not have any information with email two. Okay? All right. Who loves being pushy? <laughs> 
And you know, this is why nobody wants to become a salesperson, right? I've been a salesperson for 15 years, and it was my biggest fear be before I became one. Like, my biggest fear when I was growing up is that I'm going to be a salesperson. <laughs> and here I am. The thing is, a good salesperson is not pushy. A good salesperson is organized. And the way how they build up their whole content is to give you like a little bit of room for decision, right? Um, what we do is also, I think it was Tamara who spoke about buying atmosphere. Yeah. So what this is, is uh, setting up your rules straight away, either in meeting, either on emails. Hey, I'm going to provide you with some information. If it sounds like a good fit to you, let's have a discussion then. If it doesn't, it's totally fine. Just let me know. The point is, if it's my mom, you can tell her to call back later. So um, the whole idea with the, with the um, buying atmosphere is that like, you probably want to get an answer from the person, right? Or from the client. You don't want to get like this, <laughs> again, following up like for two, three, four months in a row. It's like, hey, have you decided or no? Because for lots of people, even if they're the super high up ranking corporate clients, it's really difficult to say no straight to your face because they're afraid that you're gonna, like your feelings will get hurt. So most of the time, if you tell them in advance that, hey, if you say yes, it's great. If you say no, it's totally fine. I promise I will not cry, uh, at least not into your face. You know, <laughs> you'll see that most of the clients, they will relax. They're like, okay. And even if they decide on no, like the whole tactic is not for them to tell you yes. The whole tactic is, for them to like, for, for you even to be able to let them off the hook and know not to uh, come back to them like every, every three days. You get the point. And the thing is, I promise you that the first time you try it, it's not easy. It's just emotional. If you are not used to this, it's not a simple thing to do. But every single client that I've worked with, they're like, you know what? I tried it once and it worked amazing. Like I was chill, they were chill, and then we had the next steps coming out. So try this if you haven't done it yet. It works. All right, you sell on logic, <laughs> there's no emotions. So again, just last week, a client, no, but Katrin, we are B2B, you need to understand there is no emotions <laughs> from a corporation. I'm like, yeah, who sits in front of you? Is it the CEO, a CTO, a marketer, a sales director, right? Every single one of them is a person, yes. And they have their own fears. And if you think about huge companies like uh, Salesforce, right? So they have those account managers, executives, however they call them, guys that handle like multi-million deals. The way how they go and close those people are not, em are not logical. These are emotional closings. Like they find out so much about their people's background, their lives before, that they accidentally bump into, gym, uh, into them in a gym or they accidentally sit next to them in a restaurant. I'm not saying, I mean, I understand you guys are Russia, <laughs> Bella Russia, you're not gonna fly in there. The point is every single one of them has some kind of an emotion. So some of the things that you've seen already today. All right, show of hands, how many of you have seen this today? I just have. So really quickly, I'll give you. Uh, what we talk about. So this is emotional X, this is the time X, and the uh, buying line is somewhere around here. So above the buying line, these are the clients that have been waiting for your solution since they were born. Like they need this now. And the moment that you write them an email, they're like, thank you so much, I, 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 like I need this, right? So obviously, and these are the guys that are the easiest to close just because your solution is for them. These guys below here, they have no idea that they need you or they have no capacity like to work with the stuff that you have. They're like, you know, these are the calls, even if you get the call with them, they're like, thank you, it's very interesting, so what time is lunch? <laughs> Zero interest. And these guys here, uh, the buffer zone, this is where most of you need to educate your clients. Like you, and education goes through qualifications. You find out what makes them motivated, what makes them mm, happy, sad, relevant to work mostly. And then you try to educate them here. So example from uh, one of my clients, they're trying to sell legal services. And it's uh, like the legal services B2C, but also B2B. And they try to get B2C services by going out to the streets and closing 100 people on the streets. So guys, can you imagine I come to you to the street and then I'm like, hey, do you need a legal service? <laughs> so you know, luckily they didn't have any broken bones. Go again. Just the legal. <laughs> just, yeah, just the legal. So uh, the way how they do it and need to do it, uh, they need to build this up, like uh, especially with uh, corporations, right? Like 
especially with corporations, it's like they need to understand how they can even provide the services. They need to craft the message to just open up the conversation for the guys to say that, you know what, we might actually work together. So if I'm like a one person organization, hopefully I will not need a lawyer for a long time. If I'm hiring my first people, then this is when I'm like, I'm gonna scroll through my like LinkedIn list, which lawyers I know to help me to craft some kind of an employment agreement, right? So, and then why would I go to this person, not another one? So this is their job to get me on the hook here. So obviously there's also quite a bit of timing, right? All right, yeah, buffer zone. All right, <laughs> some of you already know this from last year or so, but we'll love talking about this. So uh, some of you are younger than me, some of you are older than me, who has played this game? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you, you are this Mario, you go, like you pick flowers, you fight with mushrooms, then you get to this guy, then you go with the dragon. So what is your real goal here? Like why do you fight the dragon? Why do you, like why do you even want to go this far? What's the, what's the end goal? Yay. It's love, right? And then it's the princess that you want to get. To be honest, I never get through this. I never got through <laughs> this. So I think, you know, cheat code, please. So uh, your cheat code is uh, the one if you know how to build up your sales process, uh, to go through emotions, uh, to look into the eyes of, of the salesperson and not to jump in with your solutions on the sales call, on the demonstration call, but first of all, ask them what is making them emotional. All right, number six. Yeah, but, <laughs> so I also have a client there in hotel industry and uh, they're crafting also a, a software solution that helps uh, hotels to communicate with their guests better, to upsell, to improve TripAdvisor reviews and so on. So um, they scheduled the call and then the lady from the hotel, she already set up in advance. It's like, yeah, but we already have our own systems, but yeah, let's, let's, let's have a call. So, you know, they go through the typical spiel, 40 minutes. They're like, yeah, we do this and this and this and this. And what do you think, what comes up in the end? I didn't hear, but uh, we already have something else that we use. So after that, what happens next? She says, yeah, but our solution, da, 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 da. So first of all, guys, like for anybody who is selling to UK, uh, America, like English speaking markets, yeah, but is extremely annoying beginning of the sentence. Like it's extremely. So if you need to, <laughs> then craft it some, some way different. The whole point here is do it in a way, if you have some objections that you know that will come up in advance, in your particular field, there's definitely are some that definitely will come up in advance. Like do address them first. Also, we had a meeting uh, with a client and they said that, you know, our biggest objection right now is we go through the whole spiel and then we get, but you guys are from Belarus, what is this? Like, how do we know that we can trust you? So if you wait for this until the very end, they've been sitting there for 40 minutes trying to understand your accent, trying to understand your wording and the whole thing that is going on in their head is like, yeah, but can I really trust you, right? So it's your job, you take it up first. Uh, and obviously, when you do have some good client cases to use, then it's a good weapon to have. All right, so this is what I've been talking about for 20 minutes now, right? <laughs> you schedule a meeting and then you're like, hello, it's a great weather, how is it in the United States? Let me talk about my product, 40 minutes, and they're like, so when is lunch? Let us talk about this later. And you're like, it was a great meeting. <laughs> this is usually when I was like, Woo, they listened for 40 minutes and you know, they were answering WhatsApp notifications about the lunch. So if you do it in a more well-planned way, if you have a good qualification process, good qualification communication with the client before, the features should be only a few according to what those guys need. Because I know that you're probably so proud about the solution that you have. Of course you want to talk about this. But the same hotel solution I was talking to you about, like they have a gazillion of features and that's what they used to sell and they do have some clients. I mean, the, the product itself is good. But when they reach out to their clients three, four months later and they ask them, so how is it? How do you like it? They're like, yeah, you know what? This upselling really works. And they're like, yeah, how about TripAdvisor? Oh, did you have that too? And then they ask about, how about this communication? Do you send out the emails? Oh, you have that too? So use those in this upselling parts, not in your first uh, presentation, right? All right, not closing the sale properly. So this comes to those super cool, happy closers, you know? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, close this amazing deal and then they cancel. 
after a month because you might have been too pushy with the sale in the end. So closing is also a step-by-step -step process. It's not pushing the client in the corner and like, you know, no, there's no way that you can get out from here. It's like, I have this. It's, uh, it's guiding them step-by-step. Step. It's giving them like small, uh, small red signs all the way uh, that they can say yes, no, maybe I have some issues about that. So even if they do have objections that you couldn't cover in advance, they, like if you have it crafted, then you have those stop signs and say, hey, so how does it sound to you so far? Should we move forward? And if they're like, yeah, but we are in communication with some other software house, you can address this right away, right then, not to wait until like you send out the offer, right? And if you do it, craft it this way, then it will come out there. All right. Number nine, not getting referrals. And uh, first of all, you as a sales leader, as a CEO, you should feel comfortable with getting those. Then your sales team will get those too. And on the other hand, also just tell them it's totally fine to ask from the client if, if the prospect didn't become a client, right? If they did, it's easy. If they didn't, it's still easy. And if your presentation was professional enough, it's gonna be quite easy as well. Hey, can I ask for, for your help? I understand we're probably not a good fit for each other. You guys have some other solutions. Maybe I'll reach out to you in six months. But hey, uh, you are in this industry. Maybe you have a friend or two uh, that you think you could refer me to, that you think could benefit from this solution. It could be done over email, over text, over LinkedIn, or on the phone. And you will notice that quite a few of your clients will actually take out their phones and they will give you the phone numbers of those guys, like either phone numbers or their um, private emails. And what could be better, right? And then <laughs> you just hope that it will get better. And you know, because I work with so many startups, this is what it starts off with. We have an amazing product. It's gonna fly. <laughs> and then, you know, like there hasn't been a, like there hasn't been a, taxi app in the world ever. You know, Uber, <laughs> Lyft, uh, Yandex, and so on, right? So, but Taxify guys came and they're building up the process so it works. And also, hoping for a sales miracle, uh, another startup, <laughs> they are creating this amazing IoT product uh, that they're going to the United States and they hired an amazing sales rep with like 10 year uh, prior experience and the cost was like 10,000 euro per month. So he worked for three months, he got them one deal and then they fired him. And the company didn't have any more money because they were hoping that, I mean, he's a sales rep, he knows what he's doing, right? So <laughs> it doesn't really work this way. So here we go, guys, I went through all of those 10. If you have any questions, do we have time? Yeah, we have some time and if not, then we can also talk to you later. Thank you for Thank you. Uh, my question is about the um, buy atmosphere part. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't, um, if you if no, it's fine too. Where do you put this part? In the first email, in the breakup email, or uh -huh. every get email of the follow up process? No, the first email that we build is uh, quite simple, quite short, and we kind of expect not to get too much of reply from the first one. So we, in fact, the way how we do it, for example, right guys, I do like, in simple words, I do sales consulting, but I would never tell to you that I do sales consulting because it would put me into a bracket. Like, you have had some sales consulting lessons before, trainings before, and so on. I, I say that I help to scale sales, right? Uh, so in the second one, I provide a bit more information, maybe some of my clients. In the third one, I say that, hey, you know what? You probably don't have time. Uh, if you don't, let me, let me make a phone call. Kind of this is the first, like, really touchy, and then I do make a phone call. Uh, and on the phone call, this is when I'm gonna tell them, say, hey, you know what? Uh, you probably saw my emails, you probably didn't have time. Let me take a couple of minutes now. If you love it, I'll explain you how we go forward. If you don't love it from the first steps, it, it's totally fine, just tell me now.